Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today I've got another tutorial for you. And today I'm just going to be going over something that has been done before, but I found a slightly new and interesting way of doing it, and that is automatic flashing, pulsing, whatever. You can literally link up anything to this. Um, you can use flashes, scaling, but it's basically using the audio amplitude of a song and um, using it to automatically make whatever you want, really. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. Um, just a new way that I found messing around a bit um, yeah so we will get into this so basically all I've got here is a uh, clip which is just twixted really bad twixter but I don't really care and I've just got this sort of beatbox thing it's just me going like that pretty much so I'm, I was trying to just simulate the bass of a uh, song this isn't the best example because you, as you can see the First one's really the fine, and then it just slowly sort of get quieter and quieter. So, but you'll see how it sort of reacts to it. So, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, a new solid, and we can call this sound keys. And let's close up. And so we've got our solid, and we can now you will need the plugin track code for sound keys. Just search it up. I'm sure, you can get it. And we can drag that onto our solid. Now, basically, you get some weird grid thing. Make a bit more sense when we make our audio layer here, our audio layer. And as you can see, when there's like sort of no sound, there's no nothing. And as there's a beat, as you can see, it rises. So it just gives us a sort of waveform here. And basically, that will happen on all of them. So if you had a song, you'd be able to probably see the bass because it will grow. Uh, we will snare whatever you're trying to sync it up to but basically I'm just going to go on a beat and I'm going to grab this box and you just want to sort of draw it round, try and drag it around the peak like this and if you can we just want to try and make this bar at the side go up quite high and obviously you can just adjust it for how far you want it so basically the higher the bar is the higher the value it's actually going to output so I'm going to keep it about there, and we'll, then we can just go over the sound keys and hit apply. And basically, if we hit U on that layer now, you will see that we have all of these different keyframes. And what happens is, if you look at the key, uh, the little keyframe value here, as we scrub across, you'll see on the B it starts to rise all the way up to 80 and falls back down to layer 0, up, down, just like that. Now these values may not be what you want, um, but you can always try and adjust them slightly by doing it. So if we bring that down and that's near the top, you'll see now if I click apply, that goes all the way up to 100. But that may not be what you want. So what we can then do, now this is the part that I've probably seen most people do. We can actually, let's go to our, make sure your output is selected, go on the graph editor. As you can see, we get these really nice bumps because it's just a clear sort of uh, beat. Obviously with a song there's probably going to be a lot more going on so it might be a bit harder for you to pick it up but this will really help to demonstrate. I've just done it like this because it will be really easy to, for you to see. Now this isn't the best example because you would want all the beats to sort of be in the same volume so they would be all be the same height but unfortunately they're not. So, but we will have to bear with that. So what we are going to do is we're going to hit up, we're going to hold alt and then click on the stopwatch. And we're going to go type in an expression linear um, bracket, open bracket value comma. Now what we need to do is we just need to look for a value that they're all sort of they're not moving, they're pretty much still. So we can set that as zero because as you can see there's no beat happening on zero. So we'll just set that as zero. Then we hit another comma. Now we're going to want to look for a value that um, appears on the peak of the beat. So if we just hover over, as you can see, we've got 100 there. Like so, it just shows 100 units. And so we can change that to, but I want to sort of compensate a bit for these ones. So I'm gonna go about here, or make that 90. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit comma. Now what you want to do is, you know, you want to type in the values the value that you would want it to be for zero. So now I'll just hit zero, and then on for when it when it's at its peak, 
I want it to go to 100 because I'm going to use this for a, a opacity for a flash. And we just close our bracket and then click away. So now what you can see it happens if we if you look over here by our output, as we come across, it's at pretty much zero on the peak up to 100, zero, 100, and yeah. But it, obviously it's not as 100 because you only go to 100 when it hits 90, but some of these aren't actually 90. But in a song you probably won't have that problem because the beats will probably all going to be the same um, volume. Now what we can do is we can actually turn off our sound key layer so we don't have all of this, um, you know, um, HUD. And what we can do, I'll just make a new adjustment layer quickly. So I mean you can link this up to anything. So we've got a new adjustment there. We can drag on some curves, like so. And we can just bring up the brights. So as you can see we get some cool flash, I don't know, just make it so you can really see it. And we can just hit T. Now when we take the opacity down, it goes away. When we put it up, it comes back. So what we can do is we can alt click on the opacity. Then we can use the pig whip tool here and pig whip it to our output and just click away. And now what will happen is whatever value that is there, the opacity will follow it. So now it's at zero, flash on the beat, flash, flash, flash. So we're going to just ramp a review. So I mean this could be then scale, so I'll show you how to do a scale after this. So now... So yeah, we have that, which is quite cool. Flash. 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 Which is pretty cool. Okay, so what we can then do also, we can then maybe even so we can go back into our expression here. Now I want it to be a scale. So if I just drop down the scale of our clip, yeah, no. uh, you can see that normally it's at 100. So we set our value for when it's at 0 to 100. And we want to scale it up so we can set that maybe to 115. Oh god, I just hit enter. You don't want to hit enter otherwise it will make a new line. And well, now when we click out, so now at the peaks it's going to be 115. And it'll be 0. And so on. So now what we can do is we can hit Alt on our scale, pig whip it to our output, like so. So now what will happen is on the beat it will pulse in, like so. So, we're... Oh. so now it's going to zoom in. So you can put any value there and sync it up to whatever you want it to be. So you could do it for Twixter. So on the beat it could be at um, two. And the bit could be at 100, so you just got to change the value here in the equation. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a bit out just because I'm recording. Because when I'm playing it through, the um, you can see up in the top here it says frame rate's almost up, so it doesn't actually look like it's synced. Same with the one with the flashing, I was wondering why it was a bit out just because I'm recording and a lot of power is being taken. But yeah, that is basically it. So, I mean, that's all for that, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, then leave them below. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.